Hello there. Today's kin stretch class is going to function basically as a little bit of a warm up and a check in on how neutral your hips and back are uh, using some breathing patterns and some breathing setups um, that really focus in on the function of your inner thighs and your hamstrings. Um, to work on these setups today, you're not going to need much in terms of props other than a surface like a counter or a table. The height doesn't matter too much, but just make sure you're close at hand for that when we come up to standing. Yep, about uh, hip height. Uh, you'll also want something to stand on with one foot. So like a nice thick book, an inch or two thick book will work, or we're gonna use just a trusty old yoga block for that. And then finally, a towel or a hand towel that you can roll up into a, a ball or a, a cylinder rather, and use between your thighs for finding that inner thigh contraction. That'll be helpful as well. Other than that, we're just gonna need some floor space, which is where we're gonna start and get you warmed up. Come down into a side-lying position for some side-lying hip cars. Yeah, come on to the left side. And take a moment to make sure that you feel comfortable on that side. Pillow under your head, pillow under your body if you need, and that you have room behind you to move. And then we're gonna brace 50% effort and start that hip car by sweeping the top leg back behind you, finding how much extension you can find and then letting that leg smoothly arc up towards the sky, not letting the rest of your body try to move as you sweep that knee across and forward, finish up knee to knee. Good. And then we'll just reverse course, knee to chest, checking in on hip flexion before shin to the sky, keeping that height as you feel your heel begin to reach behind you, back down, and forward. Keep going back and forth at about this 30 to 50 percent intensity level. So we'd consider that like a level one car, good for warming up, for building awareness, and really trying your best to feel this as a new experience. Especially if you've done many hip cars, it can be easy to turn into autopilot mode, and we really want to try to keep it as a fresh experience so you can notice the little subtle changes that might be apparent in the hip. Great, and wherever you're at, just relax there. Let's flip onto the other side and get some awareness built on that other hip. So laying on your right side, finding your comfortable setup, just doing a body scan at 0% effort first, so you know what we're working with. And then once you're ready, brace to 30, 50% and start that top leg moving back behind you into hip extension. Feeling your edges there before moving up into hip abduction. Keeping track of your spine and pelvis, staying still as that knee comes around into a hip flexed position. And then knees touch together and we'll reverse. Knee to chest, shin to the sky, smoothly arcing to explore hip extension, and then even checking in on how well can you move your leg towards the ground for hip adduction. And keep going at your own pace, back and forth. Always feeling like you could stop at any of these angles. And partly that's a matter of going slow and giving yourself permission to feel into those corners that might not be as clear to you. But just as, just as well, it's a good way to check and see if you actually have muscular control of the hip. So sometimes it can be good to just note, do I feel like I have the stability in my whole body such that I could pause at this angle and hold that angle of my leg with some active effort? Good. Keep moving, finishing up the car you're on, and then let that go. All right. And then come up to hands and knees. So we can check in on that hip joint, um, but now with the leg sort of fixed on the ground. Yeah, perfect, Max, there you go. So come into quadruped, kickstand your right leg straight out to the side. Mm -hmm, there you go. And uh, take a moment to just look and s make sure it's as close out to the side as you can, which might mean that your belt buckle is turned a little bit towards that side, and that's totally fine. Might not be like a square quadruped. And then anchor both hands to the ground. Okay. Oh, good question. Yeah, your foot could be flat. 
if, if that feels good. If that's not working for you, just as fine to, to go like this, although it's maybe a little better to have the foot flat so you get a little more control of that inner thigh tissue. Once you get set up here, give yourself a little soft bend in the knee so it's not a locked knee, both hands on the ground, and take a moment to create a little tension through all your points of contact on the floor. So scan through the left leg and the right leg, both hands, and feel a little active positive pressure into the ground. And then we're gonna use that positive pressure to really feel what's going on here as we start to move the spine. So start curling your tailbone under into spinal flexion, going slow so you can maintain pressure on that foot, and continue curling your tailbone under until you're pretty sure you're moving your rib cage. And then we'll pause there. So we're just going up to the height of your ribs. Then making sure your foot is still heavy, start reaching your tail feathers the other way, lifting them towards the sky, feeling the limit when you can't lift those tail feathers any higher, and then trying to reach your belly button forward. And again, pausing when you feel like you're beginning to move your rib cage, and we'll just go back to curl that tailbone under. Good, taking your time and using this position, which might feel new for you to do spinal cars from, again, to notice those subtle, uh, nuanced differences that might show up as we repeat this movement over and over. Constantly checking, are your hands and both feet actively engaged with the floor? Are you moving while maintaining that active engagement? Give me 10 more seconds of this smooth, controlled, but muscular effort. And relax, very nice. Okay, and switch into the other side. So your left leg kicking out to the side, perfect. And really think here, the idea is again to highlight and build awareness about that whole hip complex. The pelvis is one side, the leg bones the other side, and then we call it the hip joint, the thing in the middle. But we really could build awareness by moving the leg or the pelvis, and we're moving the pelvis here. So checking that all points of contact on the floor are actively engaged, especially that left leg and then a little bend in that left knee so that we can start now curling that tailbone under and you're able to maintain that active pressure through the left leg as you move your spine into flexion. When you get about to that rib cage segment, pause and go tail feathers in the other direction exploring extension. Good. So if you are using this class as a little bit of a warm up for a, a workout or for another activity, you really want to take advantage of those active moments to actually just build heat in your body. And then we can use that activity to send awareness or send a um, uh, signal to the specific areas where we want more. We want more in that hip and pelvis area. Taking 10 more seconds to explore the motion and contractions that are available here. Three, two, one, and relax. Good, all right? So we're gonna leave those cars for a moment and get into some of these breathing setups. The first one's gonna be laying again on your side. Let's all start on the left side. And if you need a pillow for your head, you want to grab that. But now we're also going to use that rolled up towel. So we have a bath towel here, but you could just as soon use a hand towel. And then you're going to throw that right between your thighs and make sure that you have space between your knees. So the, the towel won't be between the knees, but more like between the thighs. Okay. And then before we really get into it, just feel that your lower back or your whole back rather is sort of rounded and softened. Mm -hmm. And if you squeeze that towel gently and take a nice inhale through your nose, you might feel, oh yeah, I can kind of relax into the lower back here. Okay. So as we do this entire side lying breathing drill, if you ever start to feel your lower back start to extend, know that that's not the purpose of the drill. And so you might just reset right to here and then get back on board with us. So step one to let that low back go. And then just watch here, the motion generally we're gonna be using is pulling that top knee straight back and then letting it go. Pulling it straight back and letting it go. Okay, so you can join us here and just get a feel for that movement because we're gonna link it with your breath and we're gonna to try to find the most pulled back position that we can, okay? So if you're not already joined with us, 
little squeeze on the uh, towel and just feel that top thigh move straight back without coming away from the towel and then release it forward so you can get a sense of this motion. And as you build a sense of that motion, try to specifically notice how you're lengthening or maybe even stretching the back of that top hip. So sort of that back pocket area is forced to open and stretch as we pull the knee back. Okay, so just noticing. All right, now starting here with knees neutral, go ahead and place your top hand on the floor so you have some bracing through your upper body. Squeeze that towel to take an inhale through your nose. And then on the uh, next exhale, intensify that squeeze with the towel so your thigh pulls down. Good, so we really are feeling that inner thigh. On the next inhale, draw that top knee back as far as it'll go. And then the exhale, squeeze that towel more, keeping the distance you've found. Next inhale, draw it back further. Maybe it won't move much at this point, that's okay. Exhale, squeeze the roller more. Good, and keep going for two or three more breaths. Using the inhale to pull that knee back and the exhale to engage more inner thigh on this top right leg. Really finding that inner thigh. Inhale pulls back. Exhale squeezes that towel further to help you get connected with your inner thigh. Final inhale here. And then relax and let it go. All right, so we're just gonna do that same drill on the other side. You can flip. Cool, 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 cool. Nice. So now laying on your right side, take a moment to just feel uh, your setup here. Make sure your lower back and your upper back are softly rounded so we're not actively extending there. And you could use a breath to help that happen. Just gentle squeeze of the towel, breathe in through your nose and feel that you're breathing into your back to let your back relax. Good. Okay. And then from this relaxed state, just check in on the gentle motion we're going after of drawing that top knee back, and then we'll squeeze, but just get an, an idea of that motion first. Good. And you'll maybe notice here, Max is doing a nice job where the feet are roughly staying together, and it's really just the, the knee and the thigh because of the pelvis that are moving. All right, so it's not like that, that top foot has to go anywhere. Cool, okay, now start from knee to knee. Make sure that lower back is rounded and now the top arm is pinned to the floor. As you take an exhale here, squeeze the roller, uh, squeeze the towel rather between your thighs. And then on your next inhale through your nose, draw that top knee back as far as you can bring it. On the exhale, keep it there and squeeze that top knee down into the towel. Inhale, pulls that knee back any further that you can find. Exhale, squeezes down on the towel. And this is really the, the key motion for us to find and feel because this is now controlling your left leg. We'll get into a little bit more why the left side is so important, but make it your goal here to really feel into how that left inner thigh is pulling your top knee back and then squeezing that towel. Last inhale, exhale cycle. Trying to make friends with that left inner thigh. Final inhale to pull back any further. And relax and let that effort go. Very nice. All right, so feeling into those inner thigh muscles is particularly important to help us get onto one leg. And um, as we'll get into a little bit more through these next breathing drills, turns out our body is much more able to get on the right side than the left side. And so we're gonna try to train that left side a little bit more. At this point, all that should mean is that you really are feeling into that left inner thigh tissue. And if you weren't, I might actually encourage you to just zoom back on the tape and uh, run through that drill we just did where you were moving your left leg back into that position to help you feel that left inner thigh. We're ready now to come up to standing and start to integrate into some standing work. 
This is where you're going to want to move towards your counter or tabletop surface, whatever you're going to need, as well as a block to stand on, and we'll meet you there. All right, so now standing near your tabletop surface, you're going to want to set your book or block, whatever you're using, one to four inches is fine. You're going to set that where your right foot is going to be standing on it, um, but in a way that your hips are near to the counter so you can get both hands onto the counter. Okay, so go ahead and find those hands on the countertop, those feet, uh, you know, six inches away from the edge of the counter, and right foot on the block. Okay, and as you're getting set up here, you should feel uh, into how much you can let your back round, kind of let that tailbone relax and curl under, and especially notice that you have weight on both hands. And now shift that weight onto your left hand more than your right. Take a little bit of an inhale to further round your back, breathing into your back, and on the exhale, make that left hand even heavier and feel your left side scrunch up. So you feel the left ab wall pulling your ribs down and connecting you to your pelvis, okay? Then on the next inhale, keep this and straighten your right leg so that your left foot comes away from the floor. Good. Very nice. So then once you're here, your left foot's off the ground, your left hand is holding the majority of your body weight, and you're feeling your left ab wall really staying engaged. Okay? And this is all we're doing in this drill, is holding a position while completing these full inhales through the nose, exhales through the mouth. And now I'm gonna kind of bounce around your body and give you an idea of where we really wanna be feeling this effort. So left ab wall for sure. The right glute area should be pretty clear to you, uh, holding you up. So if you want to take your right hand and kind of reach around to the back pocket area, you might feel some work there and you want to play that work up. If you're not feeling that, I encourage you to try to lift your foot out of the mud. Imagine you're, you have a boot in mud and you're pulling that foot out of the mud for your last inhale, exhale cycle. and relax down. Very nice work, okay? So just take a little walk around for a second. So we would consider that a, a drill for your uh, left side pattern, essentially because we're training that left inner thigh. We are using the right leg, but it's all about that right leg getting you over onto your left side, in this case indicated by your left hand, all right? But let's get a taste of what that other side feels like. So we'll just move the block to be now under your left foot both hands on the countertop, right foot starts on the ground. Take a moment here to round into your back, use an inhale through your nose to really melt into that rounded shape. And then on an exhale, feel your right hand a little heavier than your left and feel your right ab wall pull your ribs down to that right hip, okay? On your next inhale, keep that engagement and straighten out your left leg feeling that you're pulling your right boot up out of the mud, straight up. And once you're here, make sure you feel your right hand is definitively heavier than your left. Your right ab wall is clear. And maybe you feel your left glute area is working to hold you up here. Take a few more breath cycles. Feeling your left glute, maybe your right inner thigh, definitely your right ab wall because that right hand is holding your weight as your back is rounded. Breathing, sensing, maybe noticing how this side feels compared to the other side. And relax down, okay? So as you walk around this time, just a quick note about why left, Will? What's the deal with the left? It essentially comes down to the difference in shape and, and uh, characteristics of your diaphragm, that your left side of your diaphragm is very different and behaves very differently than the right side of your diaphragm. That essential asymmetry plays itself out in terms of the musculature in our left and right hips and our left and our right shoulders. Um, there's plenty more we could dig into and we might at some point. But for today, suffice to say that we really want to make sure that your left side can be just as capable and strong as your right side when it comes to this stance. So for that reason, we're going to seal this in with one more set for your left side. That'll be set up with your right foot on the block, both hands on the countertop, 
we're gonna do exactly what we just did on that first set, but now again with this left side focus, okay? So both palms flat, rounding your back on an inhale to feel some softness through the back of your body. And then feel that left ab wall engage as you exhale and make your left hand heavy. And then keep that on your next inhale to pull your left foot off the floor, straightening your right leg. Good, and once you get that left foot or left boot as high out of the mud as you can, hold it and breathe, focusing on your left ab wall and left inner thigh on that inhale, as well as on the exhale. You could also feel into that right glute area, which is essentially connecting you to the floor here. Breathing, feeling the work happening, this should feel like a good challenge for those muscles, but not um, uh, uncomfortable or painful in any way, and definitely not engaging your back. Take one or two more breaths. Feeling that left hand really providing support, even as you feel that right glute holding you up. For three, two, one, and relax. Very nice job. Okay, so now we're gonna stay standing, but we're gonna move away from the counter, and we'll see you there. All right, now stepping away from your counter surface, bring your block with you or your book, whatever you're using, so now we can translate that to a standing position without support of the hands. So step your left foot on the block and your right foot next to it, and keep those feet pretty narrow, though you don't wanna feel like you're losing balance at all. And bend your knees. Soften your lower back, and to help you with that, you could put your left hand or even both hands on your right thigh, and then straighten those arms up. So you can kind of get your chest up, but your lower back is rounded, okay? And then get a feel for the, the general direction we're trying to get in here by straightening your left knee and bending your right knee, and then come back. And as you try that a few times, you might key in on the feeling of your belt buckle turning towards your left leg, Okay, which is what we want. But the final piece is that we don't want to fall our body weight over to the right. So as you shift your weight, you want to make sure we keep weight on the left side. Okay, so come to neutral. Take a breath in to round your lower back. Feel your weight on your left foot. And then start to straighten that left leg, bend that right knee keeping your weight on your left foot, and then hold whatever position you can find there and keep breathing. In through the nose to relax your lower back, out through the mouth to feel your inner thigh contracting and engaging on that left side. Keep the left inner thigh. Keep your left ab wall if you can feel it. And breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Four or five more breaths, all in service of trying to get some motion or some stretch in the back of your left hip. Great work, final inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, finding that back of your left hip capsule. Great, okay, and then come up to standing, shake it out, clear the system, and let's just try the same thing on the other side. So your right foot will now be on the block, left foot right alongside, and then both hands can kind of post up on that left thigh. Nice straight arms, rounded lower back. Good. And then just feel the motion first. So your right leg will straighten to pull your right femur back into that right hip socket. And then feel it come back. So you just get a few motions under your belt here. And speaking of your belt, you might notice that belt buckle turning towards your right leg to know that you're really getting into the position we want. Okay. All right, now on the next one, starting from neutral, take a breath in to relax your lower back. And then as you exhale, feel that right inner thigh working to pull your right knee back and maybe bring your left knee forward. And then park it there, hold it there as you continue your breathing. Breathing in to relax your lower back. Exhaling to feel your right ab wall and your right inner thigh. And resisting any uh, urge from your body to extend your back or arch your back into extension. 
but instead really putting that stretch in the back of your right hip capsule. Couple more breaths. Feeling your weight on your right leg, even though that's the higher side, for your final inhale and let it go. Good, all right, come up to standing. Now just note internally for a moment how that right leg felt compared to the left leg, but also how the rest of your body felt when you're in that right stance compared to the left stance. And then let's come back for one more round on that left side. Okay, so the block goes again under your left foot, right foot's alongside, both hands park it on your right thigh, and then just a slight curl under with your tailbone. So it's not cat-cow motion necessarily, just a slight softening of your lower back. Okay, And then on your inhale, relax that, inner, that uh, uh, lower back. On the exhale, keeping your weight on your left foot, shift that left knee back and the right knee forward so your belt buckle or the zipper of your pants would turn to your left side. Okay. The, really, the feeling here is almost like you're about ready to stand up on that left leg as if you're stepping up a stair. So you really feel grounded and connected on that left foot. And you're feeling your left inner thigh is pulling you back into that left hip capsule and keeping you stable on your left side. Couple more breaths here. Good. And let that go. Go ahead, come up to standing and check in, kind of clear the system. All right, now to take our final step away from the counter and onto a full standing position. Uh, make sure you have some room around you, um, a room in front of you, room behind you, so we can reach those arms when we're ready. And then set your, uh, your feet about mm, shoulder width uh, uh, apart. So set up with your feet wide enough here that you can really feel into that sense of shifting your weight to your left side, shifting your weight to your right side. And that's essentially what we're gonna practice and drill with some breathing here. Okay, so keeping your feet planted, uh, soften your knees, just a slight bend in your knees, and soften your lower back. So just a slight curl under with your tailbone so your low back feels soft. You could even take an inhale through your nose to really uh, ask for that for your body. Okay, and then keeping that softness, shift your weight onto your left side while your right foot stays on the ground, and see if you can feel into your left inner thigh contraction the same muscle we've been kind of training throughout the class here. If you can't feel it, sense into a little bit of turning your belt buckle towards that left leg. Good. And finally, maybe feeling into how you don't need your right foot even if it's on the ground. So it's really that your body weight is centered over that left leg, okay? Now as you feel that left leg and left inner thigh contract, hold on to that contraction, reach your uh, right arm forward and your left arm back behind you and try to lift your gaze to be right over that right hand Okay, keeping those knees soft keeping that left inner thigh clearly contracting Keep your inhales through your nose and your exhales out of your mouth as complete as you can so you're really pulling in air through your nose and you're fully blowing that air out through your mouth and you're sensing into that left foot, left heel, and left inner thigh. Good. Just checking in. Are you locking your left knee? We don't need a lock in the knee. Are you starting to extend your lower back? We don't need to extend through the back. What we need is that stability from your left inner thigh and left hamstring that really provides the sense of connection with the ground that our body needs in standing. Last couple breaths here. And let that air go, let the arms fall, and just come back into stance on both feet, okay? So let's see how that feels now on the right side, which again is the more common side for our body to know how to, uh, how to work. So shifting that, right, that weight onto the right side, keeping the knees bent, the tailbone slightly curled under, See if you can detect that inner thigh contraction and maybe accentuate it by slightly turning your belt buckle towards that right side, okay? 
So you can see Max is using tactile touch to feel with his fingers those muscles working, which is great and, and maybe might be important for you at first. And then as you get a sense there, you want to try to feel that contraction just with your internal sense awareness so that we can reach that left arm forward, that right arm back, and you fix your gaze right over that left arm. Knees are soft. Weight is centered over the right side. So you can feel your uh, right inner thigh. You could feel your balance maintained on that right side, even as your left foot is just touching the floor. Good. Holding for a few more breaths. Noting how it might feel different than standing on your left leg. For three, two, one, and relax. Good. Okay. Shifting back to center, we're going to get just one more in on this left side. And this time I want to really just fine tune it a little bit for you. Okay. So soften those knees up again. So you keep a little bend in your knees. You feel your tailbone curl under just a little bit so your lower back is not extending. And then keep that softness in the knees and the back as you shift your weight left, trying to feel with your internal sense awareness the back of your thigh, your left thigh, and the inside, the inner part of your uh, left thigh. Both those things should help you turn your belt buckle to the left, keep your head upright, reach that right arm forward, that left arm back. Good. And really feel that connection with your right, uh, sorry, your left heel on the ground. So you're really centered over that left foot. And if that centering feels stable enough for you, you might float your right foot slightly off the ground and try to send it behind you without losing that left inner thigh sense. The breath is continuing to move in through your nose, out through your mouth, so your nervous system continuously feels grounded and connected even as you're on one leg. Three. Two, one, and relax. All right, very nice. So make your way to the floor so we can kind of seal all these changes in and do another hip car. Feel how this class has changed things. And just to give you an idea that all of these positions are chosen because of how they remind your body of a neutral position from which to breathe. So the breathing is key, the muscle activation, and the setup is key, but the end result should be, or might be, that uh, as we move this leg through its full range of motion, this hip through its full range of motion, it might feel a little different, a little bit more centered, or a little bit more neutral. Okay, so go ahead and feel into that here as you brace your body 30 to 50 percent. Then keep your body still as we send that right heel back behind you. Keep that extension as you lift that leg up to the sky. Moving that knee forward into an arcing shape to find hip flexion and then knees touch together before we retrace our steps. Knee to chest, shin to the sky, heel back behind you. Good. Okay. Noting if anything is different for your experience from that first uh, set we did today. Double down on that right hand, getting way heavier. All right, so we do one final rep that feels a little bit more like strength training. Send that leg even more behind you, still not letting your spine move. Shin even 1% higher to the sky. Knee 1% closer to your chest. All of these movements happening with no... Um, coupling with your spine. So everything is still except for that moving right leg. Finding muscular contraction at every single angle that your hip has access to. For three, two, one, and relax. Great. All right. Let's shift on to the other side. and see how things uh, that, that breathing work has affected things on this left leg. All right, so getting braced, feeling your body and pelvis supported so you can keep those areas still. Start sending your left leg back behind you into extension. 
feeling into those muscles that contract to move your leg into position. The more clear those contractions are, essentially the more control you have over your body. As your knees touch, retrace steps, knee to chest, shin to the sky. Keep that height as you send your heel behind you. Sweeping that leg around towards the floor and knees touch. On the second rep, same motion, but just make that top hand, that left hand work harder. So now your body is at a higher degree of brace as we move through this hip car. Trying to feel it a little bit more like a strength training input now for that hip and for all the muscles that connect around the hip. Maybe imagining you're moving your leg through a substance that is much thicker than air. Buttercream frosting, caramel, cream cheese. cream cheese, Nutella, wet cement, if you're really pushing through, three, two, one. Very nice. All right. Great work. Just a short one for you to get into those breathing positions. Um, I'm very curious to hear what you noticed, how it felt left to right, and also first set of cars to last set of cars. Let us know, and we'll see you soon.